Okay, hopefully this works this time. Good morning, class. So I just <laughs> I just did a whole video and realized I was not recording, which is just great. So here we go. Hopefully this one will be better than the last one anyway. So lesson number 16, uh, we're going to look at the effects that climate, is, climate change is having on humans today. And we're going to look at health, wildfires, home, and food supplies. Uh, look at how all these things are getting affected. We're going to split into two videos. So part one here, we're going to look at health. And then part two, we're going to look at the rest. So the secret word for part one, I'm gonna have two secret words today. Secret word for part one is gonna be pencil crayon. Um, so hopefully you don't just leave the video here. Um, okay, so looking at health. So greenhouse gases, which is like CO2 and other pollutants, not only warm up the climate, but they also have an effect on a wide range of um, things in Earth, on Earth. Um, and we'll see this as we go through. One of the biggest effects is that air pollution shortens the lives and kills about 7 million people worldwide each year. 7 million. Just under 1% of Earth's population is affected or their lives are shortened because of air pollution. And it's on average reduces people's lifespan by three years, three whole years. And so here in Victoria and Vancouver, we don't really have much air pollution. We're very lucky we're right by the ocean, which reduces our air pollution. And we're not surrounded by factories and it's not a crazy uh, amount of people driving around. So we're very fortunate here. But if we look at the picture below, so this is New Delhi. The picture on the left was taken last year in about March uh, 2019. And the picture on the right was taken in April um, 2020, April 23rd, actually. Um, and on the left, we can see that there's a ton of air pollution. So this isn't like smog or smoke. This is, well, I guess it's technically smog, but it's, it's not like fog coming in. It's air pollution that causes this, this thick cloud you're constantly in. But you can't see past it. And in places like New Delhi, this can shorten people's lives up to seven years, seven whole years, because the air is not clean. So I thought this would be an interesting picture because it's pretty relevant to now, because on the right, we see this is all cleared up pretty much. And the air pollution has dropped 60% in the last, over the, well, in the last really three months. Uh, and this is because of the coronavirus, the pandemic that's going around. Because um, people are locked in the doors, factories aren't running, and cars aren't running. We see the air pollution is dropping substantially across major cities around the world. So this is great. It's clearing up a little bit, but even all this, the 60% drop in air pollution is still not enough to make the changes that we need to make. We need to do more. And the worrying thing is that when the pandemic is over, we're likely to go back to what we were like before, which means air pollution is gonna pick back up again. And we're still gonna see people, people's lives getting cut short because of air pollution, which is crazy to think that we've done all this for the pandemic. We've gone locked down, uh, we've closed places, and some countries people aren't allowed to leave their house, some places only for an hour a day. And we're doing all this to save people's lives, which is great. We need to be doing this for sure. But we're not taking things like air pollution seriously, even though it's shortening people's lives across the world. Okay, so it's not only air pollution that threatens our house, there's also extreme weather events that pose a threat to our lives. So these stream weather events we're gonna talk about here are gonna be storms, um, and then we'll talk about like droughts um, and floods um, later on in this. So with storms, we can actually see that tropical storms are increasing in rainfall and wind speeds by 12% over the last couple of years, which means wind speeds can increase, so it lasts like 10 years. So in, wind speeds can increase up to like 25 uh, kilometers an hour, which is quite a big change in the last like 10 years, just because of the warming climate. So when we see more intense rainfall and more intense wind speeds, it means there's gonna be more damage, there's gonna be more costs, as well as there's gonna be more lo uh, lives lost. And I'll talk about kind of the effects of after uh, extreme weather event in a second, but just the weather event itself, the tropical storms, um, when the more powerful they are, the more likely they are to cause more fatalities. Um, so extreme weather events are something that are in, on the rise and something that's definitely concerning to our health. And then it's not only storms are getting worse, but your droughts are getting uh, longer and more common. 
Um, and just like this affected elephants and the cheetahs and other animals that we talked about last class, this is gonna affect us the same way. Um, a large por portion of the world's population does not have a secure uh, water supply. And when you have droughts, this is threatened. So when we have a storm come through, we get flooding or we get a lot of rainfall. And what this can cause is it will compromise drinking water, it will compromise waste management and um, uh, storm wa water disposal. And what this causes is an increase in waterborne diseases. So in the States, between 1949 and 1994, 68% of the waterborne outbreaks in the States were preceded by uh, extreme precipitation events, so like a tropical storm. And as these precipitation events get more extreme, we're going to see um, more, comp more problems with drinking water, more problems with human waste treatment, uh, and it's just going to lead to more waterborne diseases. And we do have the medicine to, to treat these diseases, um, but the more common they are, the harder it is to treat and the more chance they have to adapt from what they are now where we can treat them to something that we can't treat, uh, like antibiotics. If we treat too much with antibiotics, <clears throat> we're going to see that they're going to, the viruses and the bacteria is going to mutate so antibiotics won't kill it anymore. So something to think about for sure. Um, and as water levels start to rise, we're going to see more flooding, which has the same effect as tropical storms, bringing in these waterborne diseases. And again, the water levels are rising about three millimeters per year. And models have shown this you wanna to rise to five millimeters per year in the next 10 years, um, which is a pretty big increase of almost like 66%, 67% increase in water level rising rates, which is significant. Um, so not only do we have extreme weather, we also have rising temperatures, which bring its own problem. Heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and hyperthermia, which is the opposite of hypothermia, where you're too cold, where you're, this is where you're too hot. Um, cases are increasing across the world. Um, the only data I could find on this that was uh, usable and wasn't like uh, covered with a ton of math uh, is looking at the, fatal fa the <laughs> fatality, I can't speak today, rates and US workers. So if you look at the graph here, um, <clears throat> the dark orange line represents fatality rates in the states and um, it's based on rates per million people so uh, 0 0.5 would be half a person per million workers so it's not like these this is very prevalent people are dying constantly in the states uh, because of heat uh, stroke heat stress or heat exhaustion uh, heat strokes uh, but it's definitely increasing so we saw from 1992 to 2016 that it increased from about 0.2 to 0.6, or 0.26, sorry, on average, which is an increase of about 30% in fatalities. Now, an increase of 0.06 doesn't seem huge, but when you look at the percent of it, and that this is only gonna keep increasing, and it's gonna increase faster and faster and faster, we can see this causes a big problem in the long run. So, in this graph, you can also see the temperature increase, which is about, it's in Fahrenheit, but it's about one degree Celsius on average. And it's going to fluctuate um, because it's, it's statistic. It's not like perfect data. But if we look at the dotted lines, this is going to show us the trend. So the trend says it's going to increase um, at this rate. And as we go, models are showing this rate is going to increase even more. So the trend's not going to be a straight line. It's going to curve up and become exponential, kind of like, um, how the pandemic uh, or the uh, COVID-19 cases have increased exponentially. We can see the temperatures going to increase like that and um, fatalities like this will also increase in the same boat. Um, okay, so I'm gonna end the video there. So this is part one, uh, part two will follow right now. Um, so I'll see you there. <laughs>